Hi, I'm Yadim Mitrani and I'm Jewish from Israel, born and raised in Tel Aviv and today I'm living in Florence, Italy and I'm part of FIC, Florence International Church. Today I'm going to share with you uh, in this video the traditional Passover. I'm also going to include uh, the similarities, some similarities between the Easter and Passover. But just before I would like to bow our head and have a prayer. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you for this blessing you're putting upon us by letting us, under all circumstances, to be able to celebrate this Passover. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, you put your hands on people's houses today and you will protect them, that you will give them peace and courage. As you pass over your people in Egypt by covering their doors with the blood of the Lamb, you will pass over them as well at these times from the COVID-19 virus. Father, I pray that you will give courage to the people in the frontline hospitals that are risking their lives. Father, favor them. Father, I pray that you will heal this world from this virus and that by your victory, you will turn people's hearts to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Uh, first is the dates. Uh, the dates of the two festivals, um, the Passover and Easter, tend to coincide or at least be close in proximity as they both are connected to the lunar calendar. And the Easter specifically is set uh, to fall on the Sunday after the first full moon. The first full moon uh, following the vernal equinox. Uh, the second uh, similarity is the spring. In uh, connection to their dates, which I spoke earlier, in the first similarity, both festivals uh, mark the beginning of spring and the chance for renewal. The third similarity is the feast. Uh, the story of Easter is set in Jerusalem during the Passover time. Uh, as we understand, uh, Jesus, when, uh, when, he, when he had sent, been sent to die on the cross, uh, just before he took uh, the fateful uh, journey, Jesus ate his last meal uh, in the Last Supper, uh, uh, there is elements uh, which we, we can see uh, in the Jewish cuisine uh, during the Passover celebration, which is lamb, bitter herbs, uh, and unleavened bread. Um, and this food uh, is uh, what we have on the f some of the food that we have on the table during the Passover. Uh, the eggs is another similarity. As you know, the Easter eggs is received by children in the form of chocolate. And it's uh, celebrating the symbol of new life and rebirth. In Passover, it's a bit different meaning for the eggs, but uh, the eggs is, um, is a boiled egg, which we dip in uh, salt water. Uh, it's meant to symbolize uh, the tears in remembrance of ancient Israel and its destruction of the temple. Uh, the fifth similarities is uh, the meaning of the word Easter, which is uh, related to uh, Passover. Uh, Easter is a translation of to, to the word in French, Pac, or in Italian, Pasqua, which uh, refer to Passover. Uh, and the word Pasqua originally coming from the Old Greek. Uh, the last uh, similarity which is, is uh, I call it from slavery to freedom and why? It's uh, because uh, in the, um, the story of the Jewish Passover is about the um, uh, liberation from slavery to freedom from uh, Egypt. Also in, the, in Easter, uh, Jesus when he died on the cross, he saved the uh, humanity lives from their sin. Hi, so a few days uh, before Passover, people in general uh, will clean their houses uh, for a few reasons. Uh, first reason is cleansing, and the second reason is to make sure there are no yeast left at homes because um, at the Passover holiday uh, we abstain from eating yeast.
The ceremony of Passover generally takes place at the first day uh, of Passover, at the first time, uh, which, are, which is in an Israeli time at 6.24. In general, there is two versions of doing Passover. There is the short version and the long version. Um, we are going to do the short version. Uh, and now I would like to welcome to, uh, to do with us Passover uh, Leoni and uh, my wife and Matteo, my son. Okay, this is the candle lighting. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who sanctified us by commanding us to light the holy candles. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has kept us alive and brought us to this happy moment in our lives. This is a traditional woman's prayer at candle lighting. May it be your will, God of our ancestors, that you grant my family and all Israel a good and long life. Remember us with blessings and kindness. Fill our home with your divine presence. Give me the opportunity to raise my children and grandchildren to be truly wise, lovers of God, people of truth, who illuminate the world with Torah, good deeds and the work of the Creator. Please hear my prayer at this time. Regard me as a worthy descendant of Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel and Leah, our mothers, and let my candles burn and never be extinguished. Let the light of your face shine upon us. Amen. Amen. Blessing uh, of the children. May God make you like a fine and menashe. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and favor you. May God's face turn to you and grant you shalom. And now we're going to move to do the Kiddush, which is sanctifying the time. In general, we will fill the cup even overflow. Uh, we're not going to do it that time. And before we're going to drink the cup, I'm going to bless. Here I am ready to perform the mitzvah of the first cup of wine and to dedicate this whole evening to telling the story of wonders performed for our ancestors on the night of the 15th of Nisan, 3,200 years ago. Blessed are you, God, our God, ruler of the universe, who create the fruits of the vine. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has chosen us from among the nations and the language, sanctifying us by your mitzvot, lovingly you have given us festivals for happiness, including today, the holiday of the Matzot, the season of our liberation, a sacred day to gather together and to commemorate the Exodus from Egypt. For you have chosen us and sanctified us among the nations. You have granted us joyfully the holidays, blessed are you, Adonai, who sanctifies the people of Israel and the festivals. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has kept us alive and brought us to this happy moment in our life. We call Urchatz, which is the first hand washing. Called Karpas, which is the first dipping, the spring green. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two potatoes. You're gonna take one, I'm gonna take one, and we're gonna dip it. But before we eat, we're gonna need to bless it. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who create the fruits of the earth. Amen. Amen. Yachatz, which is breaking of the matzah. Under the plate, we have 
a bag of matzah of unleavened bread, which you need to be under this uh, plate. We take, there is three matzah, the Kohen, Levi, and the third one, Israel. We take the second one and we divide it by two. And the biggest part, we need to uh, wrap it inside a, a towel and leave it for later on when we're gonna do the afikoman. Basically, we're gonna hide it and we're gonna move to this, we're gonna bring it back later on during the, the ritual. And then we're uh, gonna take the second half of it, we're gonna bless it. May you be blessed, Hashem our God, King of the entire world, for having sanctified us. May you be blessed, Hashem, our God, King of the entire world, who bring false bread from the earth. Amen. Amen. And we dip it in the salt. The next part is Magid. Telling the story, this is the bread of poverty and persecution. This is the bread of poverty and persecution, <coughs> bless you, that our ancestors ate in the land of Egypt. As it says in the Torah, seven days shall you eat matzot, the bread of poverty and persecution, so that you may remember that you were a slave in Egypt. Let all who are hungry come and eat. Let all who are in need come and share the Pesach meal. This year we are still here, next year in the land of Israel. This year we are still slaves, next year free people. Amen. Amen. Four questions. Manish Tana, how is the night different from all other nights? On all the nights, we ate either leavened bread or matzah. But on this night, we ate only matzah. On all other nights, we ate other kinds of vegetables. But on this night, we ate maror, bitter herbs. On all other nights, we need to dip our vegetable even once. But on this night, we dip twice. On all other nights, we ate either sitting upright or reclining. But on this night, we are all reclining. Uh, we're now moving to Shmuel's story. To the rabbis, as a storytellers, we were slaves. What if, if God hadn't taken our ancestor out of Egypt, then we would still be enslaved to Pharaoh in Egypt, along with our children and our children's children. Even if all of us were wise, all of us discerning, all of us veteran scholars, and all of us know legible in Torah, it would still be a mitzvah for us to retell the story of the Exodus from Egypt. The more and the longer, one expands and embellishes the story, the more commendable. The four children. Blessed be God, blessed be he. Blessed be the giver of the Torah to the people Israel. Blessed be he. The Torah alludes to four children. One wise, one wicked, one simple, one who does not know how to ask. What does the wise child say? What are the testimonies, the statutes and the laws which Adonai, our God, has commanded you? You must tell some of the laws of Pesach from the Mishnah, for example. We do not proceed to any of the common dessert or after-dinner celebrations after eating the Pesach lamb. What does the wicked child say? Whatever does this service mean to you? The child emphasises to you and not himself or herself since the child excludes himself or herself from the community and rejects a major principle of faith, you should set that child's teeth on edge and say, it is because of this that Adonai did for me when I went free from Egypt. Me and not that one. Had that one been there, he or she would have not been redeemed. What does a simple child ask? What is this? And you shall say to the child, by a mighty hand, Adonai brought us out of Egypt, out of this house of bondage. As for the child who does not know how to ask, you should prompt him, as it said, you shall tell your child on that day, saying, it is because of this that Adonai did for me when I went free from Egypt. Standing up for us. This promise 
has stood for our parents and for us in good stead. For not just one enemy has stood against us to wipe us out. But in every generation there have been those who have stood against us to wipe us out. Yet the Holy One, blessed be He, keep on saving us from their hands. The God. Ten Plagues The Ten Plagues God's strong hand, His outstretched arm and His little finger. God took us out of Egypt with a strong hand and an outstretched arm, with awesome power, signs and wonders. God took us out, not by the hands of an angel, not by the hands of a messenger, but the Holy One, blessed be He, Himself in His own glory. Just as it says, I will pass through the land of Egypt, and I will strike down every firstborn in Egypt, both human and beast. I will execute judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am God. With a strong hand refers to an epidemic of animal disease. The fifth plague, the hand of Adonai, will strike your livestock in the fields, the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the cattle and the sheep, with a very severe disease. God's finger and the sixteen drops. With wonders refers to the plagues of blood, fire and smoke that are recalled by the prophet Joel. Before the great and terrible day of Adonai comes, I will set wonders in the sky and on earth, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall turn to darkness and the moon into blood. The Ten Plagues The Holy One, blessed be he, brought ten plagues on the Egyptians in Egypt. These are the ten. Traditionally, throughout the um, this time, each plague that is listed and mentioned, a drop of wine is actually dropped from the cup. Blood, frogs, lice, insects, cattle plague, boils, hail, locust, darkness, and death of the firstborn. An outstretched arm. And now uh, what we're going to do is to take the meat, which can be or lamb, or chicken, or beef. In our case, we have the chicken. And then I'm going to say the next things. With an outstretched arm refers to God's sword as a metaphor for the plague of the firstborn. Just as it, it does elsewhere, David woke up and saw the angel of Adonai standing between heaven and earth, with a drawn sword in his hand, outstretched against Jerusalem. With awesome power refers to the revelation of God's power to our very eyes, that is just what Moshe tells Israel. Did the God ever before attempt to come and extract one nation for himself from the midst of another? nation by uh, prodigious acts, by signs and wonders, by war, by a strong hand, an outstretched arm and awesome power as Adonai, your God, did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. With signs refers to the staff as God told Moshe, take the staff in your hand to, to do sign with it. Amen. Amen. We don't usually eat it, it just, uh, um, this is the way we, we bless it. In general, we will have uh, a song which called Dayanu. Each one of these good things would have been enough to earn our thanks, Dayanu. God took us out of Egypt, punished the oppressors and humiliated their gods, exposing their futility. God killed their firstborn when the Egyptians refused to release Israel, God's firstborn, and gave us some of the Egyptians' wealth, just compensation for our labour. God divided the Red Sea for us, bringing us across on dry land, while drowning our pursuers in the sea. God supplied our needs for 40 years in the desert, feeding us manna. God granted us the Shabbat and brought us to Mount Sinai to receive the Torah. God ushered us into Eretz Israel and later built us a temple, the chosen place to atone for our crimes and misdemeanors. Move to Passover, Matzah and Maror. Uh, and we're going to speak about what Rabbi Gamliel used to say. All who have not explain the significance of three things during the Pesach Seder have not yet fulfilled their duty. 
the three are the pes the pesovo lamb, the matzah, and the maror. The pesovo lamb that our ancestors ate in these days of the temple. Why did we used to eat it? To remind ourselves that God passed over our ancestors' house in Egypt. At this very hour, on this very date, Moshe has already instructed us, when your children ask you, what do you mean by this ceremony? You shall say, it, it is the Passover offering to Adonai, because God passed over the houses of Israel in Egypt when God struck the Egyptian, but saved our houses. And now we're going to move to the second uh, cup of wine, which is the cup of redemption. Here I am ready to perform the mitzvah of the second of the four cup, the cup of redemption. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who redeemed us and redeemed our ancestors from Egypt and who brought us to this night to eat matzah and maror. Adonai, our God, and the God of our ancestors, may you bring us in peace to the future holidays. May we celebrate them in your rebuilt city. And may we be able to eat the Passover lamb and the other sacrifices offered on the altar. We will thank you for redemption. Blessed are you, the Redeemer of Israel. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, creator of the fruits of the land. Between the cherubims, you are the Almighty God, the one who made heaven and earth, the one who sits in the circle of the earth, the one the elder of the angels. In every generation, in every generation, one is obligated to see oneself as one who personally went out from Egypt. Just as it says, you shall tell your child on that very day. It's because of this that God did for me when I went out from Egypt. Not only were our ancestors redeemed by the Holy One, blessed be he, but even we were redeemed with them. Just as it says, God took us out from there in order to bring us and to give us the land God swore to our ancestors. Psalm 113 Hallelujah! Servants of Adonai give praise. Praise the name of Adonai. Let the name of Adonai be blessed now and forever. From east to west the name of Adonai is praised. Adonai is exalted above all nations. God's glory is above the heavens. Who is like Adonai our God? Who, enthroned on high, sees what is below in heaven and on earth? God raises the poor from the dust, lifts up the needy from the refuse heap, to place them with the great men of God's people. God places the childless woman among her household as a happy mother of children. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 114. When Israel went forth from Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's holy one, Israel God's dominion. The sea saw them and fled, the Jordan ran backward, mountains skipped like rams, hills like sheep. What alarmed you see that you fled, Jordan, that you ran backward, mountains that you skipped like rams, hills like sheep. Tremble, earth, at the presence of Adonai, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turned the rock into a pool of water, the flinty rock into a fountain. Why this matzah? Matzah al shuma. This matzah, why do we eat it? To, to remind ourselves that, that even, even before the dough of, of our ancestors in Egypt had time to rise and become leavened, the King of Kings, the Holy One, blessed be He, revealed Himself and redeemed them. The Torah says they baked unleavened cakes of the dough that they had taken out of Egypt, for it was not leavened since they had been driven out of Egypt and could not delay, nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. Why this maror? Maror al shuma. This maror, why do we eat it? To, to remind ourselves that the Egyptians embittered our ancestors' lives. They embittered their lives with hard labor, with mortar and bricks, and with all sorts of fields labor. Whatever the task, they wrote them ruthlessly. Maror. So basically the maror is the bitter leaf, which I'm going to divide by two, 
and I'm gonna uh, give to each person on the table and then we're gonna bless. After we're gonna bless, we're gonna dip it in the uh, haroset, which is the dip. Here I am, ready to perform the mitzvah of eating maror. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who has sanctified us by commanding us to eat maror. This dip is um, the honey from dates. Korech, Hillel sandwich at the temple. We have just eaten matzah and maror separately. However, in the days of the temple, Hillel, the head of the Sanhedrin, used to, blind, used to bind into one sandwich. Passover lamb, matzah and uh, maror. He ate them all together in order to observe the law. You shall eat it, the Passover sacrifice, on matzah and maror. Eating the sandwich tonight reminds us of the way life combines moments of suffering, maror, and of relief, matzah, enslavement and freedom. In, in, memory, all, in memory of, of Passover, Passover, in, in the, the temple, temple as the Lord used, used to celebrate it. it. So now we're going to prepare the sandwich. Sure. So we finished our sandwich of the mozzah, the maror, and the date honey dip. Now we're going to eat um, an egg. The egg commemorates the destruction of the temple. So we're going to eat the egg. Mm -hmm. And usually after eating the egg, um, the ceremony would um, be um, paused just to take the um, Passover meal. The blessing after the meal. Here I am ready to perform the mitzvah of thanking God for the food we have eaten, just as it says. You shall eat and be satisfied and bless Adonai your God for the good land God gave you. Amen. The command is, as you saw, is the bigger half of the second matzah and uh, basically uh, we put it in a bag and then in a towel and we hide it uh, somewhere at home that nobody knows. We're sending the kids uh, by telling them hot or cold to find it. Once we found the Afi commands, the kids found the Afi command, they bring it to the table back and then uh, we think the hidden Afi command. So, after the big kids uh, found the matzah, <laughs> uh, bring it to the table and we're gonna eat it. So here I am, ready to fulfill the mitzvah of eating the afikoma. This matzah is a reminder of the Passover sacrifice which was eaten on full stomach in the day of the temple. So break it into two, or to the person in the table, the amount of people in the table, and we just eat it. The one the angels bow before. Oh, your glory fills the The third cup. We conclude the blessing over the meal by drinking the third cup, the cup of blessing, while reclining to the left or drinking with your left hand. So, Yardin, you drink first. 
And because I've got Matteo, I'm going to recline to the left. Thank you. Here I am, ready to perform the mitzvah of the third cup of wine, which concludes this Passover meal. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who creates the fruit of the vine. That's why we cry, Halle, 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 Halle. Fourth cup and the festival Hallel. Hallel is Psalms. The Passover order is divided into two parts of the meal itself. In fact, Hallel, which are the Psalms itself, is split, while the first half of the order and of the Psalms is dedicated to the past, to historical memory of the redemption from Egypt. The second half looks forward to the future and ends with the wish next year in Jerusalem. Messianic hope inspires the singing from now to the completion of the order. Fill the fourth cup of wine and place it before you and conclude singing the festival Hallel. The fourth cup. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, ruler of the universe, who created the fruit of the vine. Blessed are you, Adonai, for the vine and the fruit, for the beautiful and spacious land you gave us. Have mercy on us and bring us there to eat its fruits. Grant us happiness on this feast of Matzot. Blessed are you, Adonai, for the land and for the fruit of the vine. Amen. Amen. It's uh, the Passover set, uh, order ends with a prayer that all our efforts to perform the Seder properly may be pleasing and acceptable to God. The prayer was composed by Rabbi Yosef Tov Elen in 11th century in France. Uh, the concluding poem, uh, Looking Forward to the Next Year Seder, concluded is the Passover Seder finished down to the last detail with all its laws and costumes. As we have been able to conduct this order, this order, so may we someday perform it in Jerusalem. You, one who dwells in the palace, support your congregation countless in number. May you soon lead the offshoots of your stock, bringing the redeemed to Zion in joy. Next year in Jerusalem, God makes peace in heaven, and so God make peace over us, all Israel. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much uh, to all of you who have uh, watched this video with us. We hope that uh, it's enlightened you a little as to how the Passover ceremony is performed. Like Yarden said, it's uh, the shorter version, um, but I think by watching it, you'll get a gist of uh, what it's all about. Yes. So we all we all we hope that you all enjoyed it.